NAD declines during aging, and that's what we can see here with activity or levels of NAD plotted on the y-axis against age on the x. So in youth, NAD levels are relatively high, whereas at, in advanced age, they're relatively low. And that's important because NAD impacts the health and or function of many organ systems, as shown here. So starting with NAD at the middle, we can see that NAD impacts the health and or function of the brain and nervous system, liver, vasculature, heart, and so on down the list. So with these data in mind, what's my intracellular level of NAD? So to measure that, I use the Ginfinity Intracellular NAD assay. And if you're interested in measuring your own levels of NAD, there'll be a discount link in the video's description. Now on to the question of the day, which is what's my intracellular level of NAD? And that's what we can see here. So my concentration of NAD intracellular, this is for all blood cells, is 25.6 micromolar. So what does that mean? Is that high, low, is it good, bad, etc.? So for that, we go to Ginfinity's definition of categories, where deficient is defined as 20 to 30 micromolar, whereas optimal would be higher, 40 to 100 micromolar. So why are these data considered optimal or deficient? More specifically, why would 40 to 100 micromolar be considered optimal? So for that, we go back to our initial question of how do intracellular levels of NAD change during aging? But now let's have a look at more specific data using Ginfinity's uh, data. And that's what we can see here. So NAD again declines during aging, but this is with more specific data, including actual micromolar amounts. And in Ginfinity's data, this is a, a data for 116 subjects. So starting with people that are younger than 20 years old, the average intracellular level of NAD is 44 micromolar, which then is significantly higher than 20 to 30 year olds who had an average NAD level of 34 micromolar. 20 to 30 year olds also have a significantly higher level of NAD when compared with 30 to 55 year olds with an average NAD level of 29 micromolar. And then 55 to 90 year olds who had an average uh, NAD level of 27 micromolar, that wasn't significantly different from the 30 to 55 year olds that's shown by the p-value being greater than 0.05. Now to put my data into perspective, for my chronological age currently of 50 years and my NAD level of 25.6 micromolar, that would put me in the aged category in terms of intracellular levels of NAD. So this is one way to look at the data. Another is by comparing data for subjects that were younger than 30. And for this group, they had uh, the average NAD level was 42 micromolar with people who are older than 30 who had an average NAD level of 28 micromolar. And when using a two sample t-test, these data are indeed significantly different. So we can see that people younger than 30 have about a 30%, 33% higher level of intracellular NAD when compared, when compared with people older than 30 years. Now, what about the optimal range that was 40 to 100 micromolar? Uh, if we look at Ginfinity's data, for people younger than 20, the interquartile range, that uh, blue box, that would suggest that 40 to 50 micromolar may be optimal. Now, that I have aged NAD levels is a bit of a, of a surprise, and that's because relatively high niacin and apigenin intake should have positively impacted NAD. So let's take a look at that story. So for that, we'll have to look at pathways that impact the concentration of NAD, which is shown here with NAD at the bottom. And at the top, we've got NA and NAM. NA is nicotinic acid, which is converted by three enzymatic steps into NAD. Similarly, NAM is niacinamide, and that's converted first into NMN, the popular dietary supplement, and then NMN is converted into NAD. So two enzymatic steps from niacinamide to NAD. Now, both of these, nicotinic acid and niacinamide, are found in the dietary vitamin vitamin B3 niacin, which then raises the question, am I niacin deficient? So as we all know on this channel, I track my diet every day. I weigh all my food. I've done that since 2015. And since January of 2022, my average daily niacin intake is 41 milligrams per day. So what does that mean? Let's put that into perspective. Well, compared with the RDA, which is 16 milligrams of niacin per day, I'm currently at two, two and a half fold higher than the RDA for niacin intake. And it's been like that for at least the past 13 months. So to address the question, am I niacin deficient? The answer would be no. So this, this is one reason why I'm surprised that my NAD levels are relatively low or aged. Now, alternatively, NAD can be de uh, degraded into NAM, and that's in part by the action of the enzyme CD38. Now, fortunately, CD38 can be, in be inhibited by food components, including apigenin. And that's what we can see here with CD38 activity on the y-axis plotted against the concentration of apigenin on the x. 
And at about 50 micromolar of apigenin, we can see that CD38 activity is about 85% inhibited in the presence of apigenin. Now, we may not need that much apigenin to inhibits CD38 activity because in data from that same paper, and note that this paper and all the other papers in the video will be in the video's description, in this same paper, 25 micromolar apigenin was sufficient to increase intracellular levels of NAD, which is shown here with NAD levels plotted on the y-axis. And then we can see that in cells from mice that were treated with 25 micromolar apigenin, there was about a 75% increase for NAD levels above control. So with that in mind, that raises the question then, am I apigenin deficient, thereby leading to higher than uh, usual or expected CD38 levels, leading to an increased degradation of NAD and relatively aged levels of NAD in my situation? So my primary source of apigenin comes from fresh parsley. Uh, fresh parsley has about 215 milligrams of apigenin per 100 grams, and this is from the USDA flavonoid database. I'll put that link also in the video's description. Now, since I track my dietary intake every day, I know my average parsley intake since, uh, and over the past about year and a half, I've averaged 49 grams per day of parsley. So when multiplying these two data, the concentration or content of apigenin in parsley and my average parsley intake, we get an average apigenin daily intake of 106 milligrams per day. Now, when considering the molecular weight of apigenin and total blood volume, I can then count and assuming 100% absorption, which may probably isn't the case, but assuming 100% absorption, I would get a circulating blood concentration of 79 micromolar for apigenin based just on my parsley intake. Now, remember though, we may not need uh, 79 micromolar to inhibit or fully close to fully inhibit CD38, even if there's only 30% absorption of apigenin um, or absorption from apigenin in the blood into cells, even if it's only a third of that, uh, I would still get close to the 25 micromolar needed to almost uh, completely inhibit CD38. So to address the question, am I apigenin deficient based on this data? Probably not. So this data for NAD, my relatively low NAD is also surprising because uh, my biological age data is relatively youthful. And that's in the presence of this 25.6 micromolar NAD. And note that the NAD measurement was done on the same day, around the same time, that I sent more, my blood for analysis. And when entering the biomarkers for Levine's phenoage, as shown here, I was 17 years younger on that day, and when using aging.ai, 22 years younger. So I've got relatively youthful biological age data, but yet relatively low NAD. Which then raises the question, which biomarkers may be improved by increasing NAD? And I covered this at the end of my last video, so if you missed it, this, uh, this will, be, will be new, but if you saw my last video, uh, this won't be new. So cholesterol conversion into DHEA, DHEA is the precursor metabolite for DHEA sulfate, which declines during aging and relatively low levels are associated with an increased all-cause mortality risk. DHEA sulfate is low and potentially a weakness in my data. So the conversion of cholesterol into DHEA requires NADPH. So starting from cholesterol and ending with DHEA uh, there, it's five enzymatic steps and each of them require NADPH. Now, NADPH stands for nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, dinucleotide which is NAD, only with a phosphate group. So NAD phosphate is essentially NADPH, which then raises the question, is relatively low NAD limiting DHEA and then because DHEA will be limiting, I would have relatively low levels of DHEA sulfate. So to test that, step one is will 300 milligrams per day, which I've been doing for about the past two weeks, of NMN, and yes, I did start uh, supplementing with NMN. For those who think I'm anti-supplements, I'm not. I just, I favor targeted supplementation with a demonstrated need. In this case, there may be a demonstrated need. So will 300 milligrams per day of NMN increase NAD? Step two is I'm going to send my blood for NAD analysis, and I plan on doing that about a week from now, and we'll see if that amount of NMN is sufficient to raise NAD levels. If not, in step three, I plan on increasing my NMN intake to around 600 milligrams per day, maybe even higher, but let's see how the test results uh, go first. And then in step four, I'm going to do a full blood panel again in March. Uh, March 6th, that's the targeted date for blood test number two in 2023. And in that test, I'll measure not just my intracellular level of NAD, but all of the measurements for Levine's phenoage, aging.ai, and all of the three epigenetic tests that I commonly get. And then we'll see if NMN can impact not just NAD, but hopefully not change any of the other biomarkers with the exception of DHES or 
even any of the other weaknesses that I have in my data, including things like homocysteine or Horvath's epigenetic clock. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links that will be in the video's description that you may be interested in and merch, including discount links for NAD quantification, green tea, epigenetic testing, oral microbiome composition, at-home blood testing, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, Buy Me A Coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in any of that, these links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.